Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. In the words of St. Paul, from Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, says, I wish to know Christ and to be conformed into the pattern of his death, that somehow I may come to know the power of his resurrection. Again, thank you for joining us on another Friday as we walk the way of the cross in the beautiful little church of St. Teresa's in Grays, Long Island, the Bahamas. The Stations of the Cross are representations of the path Jesus bore on his way to crucifixion. They involve Jesus' suffering, insults, moments of support, and relay the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus undertook for the salvation of the whole world. When we pray the stations, it is not for the purpose of undertaking an historical remembering of what occurred, but to show us what is happening now, what is happening within each of us. The reason for praying the stations of the cross is to enter the mystery of Jesus' gift to himself for us to experience his means of transforming suffering through love. Join us now as we walk, making 14 steps for prayer, meditation, and contemplation. This, we pray, would be a moving experience for all of us, even though we are not physically together. Let us now, wherever we are, prepare our minds and our hearts to prayerfully participate in this very personal walk with Jesus. Luke chapter 9 verse 23 reminds us, Whoever wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. As we walk with Jesus Christ from the Praetorium of Pontius Pilate to the tree on Calvary, we recall to mind the passion and death of our Lord and see the great love He has for us. By your precious wounds, let me see the horror of my sin and begin to understand your overwhelming love. I meditate on the mysteries of your passion and death to help me amend my life and to prepare myself to someday see you face to face. In the blood of the cross is my salvation. This journey prepares me for my personal crosses and failures. I will take up my cross each day and follow you. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus is condemned to death. All his public life he went from town to town doing good. But they said he was troublesome and had broken the law. His kindness, his healing, his miracles were not remembered. 
all the good he had done was forgotten. He was a threat to those in authority, so he had to die. Jesus allowed men and their false judgments to sentence him to death. After being scourged and crowned with thorns, Jesus Christ was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. God spared not his only son, but allowed him to suffer for all of us. How painful it is when we are falsely accused. We even flare up in anger and start making excuses when we are rightly accused. Often we deeply hurt others by our false judgments, yet we want to be well thought of and appreciated. Lord, give me the wisdom to not to judge other people. Give me the strength to forgive those who judge me falsely. It is hard to understand why you would let men condemn you to death. Maybe you allowed this to teach me not to judge others. We want you in your mercy and love, to be our only judge. The second statement, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The two pieces of wood were crude and rough. The cross was the way criminals were punished. Why did you accept the cross and start to carry it? This would have been the perfect time for a miracle. You had suffered enough already. During the night and early morning, you had been whipped, crowned with sharp thorns, and made fun of. People spat in your face, and all your friends left you. But Jesus, you took the wood of the cross, drew it close to your body, and started walking down the streets of Jerusalem. You did this for me. You, you viewed the cross as a great treasure, a special sign of our love. The Lord has placed on him the sins of us all. For the wickedness of his people, he has stricken him. We want nothing to do with the cross. We accept one if we can pick it out, but crosses cramp our style, they slow us down. Sickness, insults, and failure make us see how weak we are and how much we need you. We think we are strong, and then a cross comes into our life and we find out how weak we are. Jesus, be my strength. Help me to see the value of the cross. I will glory in the cross of Jesus Christ. The crosses I carry will become the instruments of my salvation. Blessed Mother. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. You were exhausted and weak from carrying the cross. Your shoulders ached from the rough wood. Your back was tender from the painful scourging, and your head dotted with blood from the thorn bush crown. You fell on your knees. How cruel people can be. You created human beings to care for each other. You give love, we return hate. Could no one see the evil of what was happening? You arose and continued on to show that your love is not just in words, but in action. You didn't strike back in revenge. 
All your energy was spent on loving us. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our sorrow. Jesus, the minute we get a little tired in your service, we quit. The first time we fall, we give up. When someone makes fun of us, we stop doing good. How different Christians are from Christ. Jesus, without a word of complaint, you rose to your feet and continued the journey. Maybe we can learn to get up and start walking again. Maybe we can learn that the great glory of a Christian is rising every time he or she falls. desire to be well thought of, we must never try to buy love and respect by doing what is evil. Help us things not because they are popular, but because they are right. Jesus, how tired and weak you were. 
They could see that you were not able to carry the cross much longer. You were slowing things down and the soldiers had more enjoyable things to do that Friday afternoon. So they wanted to get it over with. Then along came poor Simon. Perhaps he had walked down the wrong street and so ran into the procession slowly moving toward Calvary. The soldiers grabbed him and forced him to carry the cross. The God-man was aided by an unwilling passerby. Oh, the mystery of being at a certain place at a certain time, and your whole life is changed. Simon, unwilling to touch the wood of the cross, the cross that would save him. Whoever does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Often we receive a cross we don't want. We rebel, complain, drag our feet. But after a while we begin to notice you, your kindness, your love, your forgiveness, and endurance of pain. We say to ourselves, I am going to carry my burdens in a new way. Then the pains and heartaches of life become fruitful. By the power of Jesus, my suffering will become redemptive. The cross will become for me not a stumbling block, but a stepping stone. Not poor Simon, but blessed Simon. Oh, happy mistake of running into Jesus Christ on his way to Calvary. The wrong street became the pathway to heaven. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Those who have walked a great distance in the hot sun know how Jesus felt and looked. Where were the many people he had taught and cured during his public ministry, except for his mother, a few women, and the Apostle John? Everyone else seemed to be in hiding. But, but wait a moment. Out from the crowd stepped the woman. She offered her veil and wiped the blood and sweat off his face. The crowd teased and taunted her. But she was proud to do this small task for someone in so much pain and suffering. She had learned that she was responsible to God and the time of need was now. She did what God wanted her to do. A woman saw Jesus in distress and presented him with her veil to wipe his face. Often I do things or don't do them because of what others will think or say. On judgment day, I will have to answer for these actions. When evil is being done, do I step forward to do what is right? Am I a witness to others for what is good and true? The walk Jesus made to Calvary gave many people a chance to do something good. Hardly anyone used the opportunity. Evil triumphs because people stand by and do nothing. Lord, the courage to help others in their time of need.
Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, all the strength and endurance seem to have left your body, and you have fallen a second time. You needed to rest and have your wounds attended to. But the soldiers started pulling at you and dragging you to your feet. The procession started again, slowly winding its way down toward Calvary. For the sins of the world, Jesus falls a second time. Jesus, when we fall, we give up. We begin looking for excuses not to try again. We must learn to get up each time we fall. It is and see God's power. Only the person who keeps getting up will be able to finish the journey. Help me to rise after every fall. self-centered that we don't even know who needs our help and attention in our own family or neighborhood. Jesus, I am sorry for my sins of not caring about others. Help me to learn to care by seeing how much you love and care for me. The ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. On this third fall, it was harder than ever to get up. Jesus, you would have loved to lie there and go in peace to your heavenly Father. But you stood up a third time and started the upward march. Love reaches out. You overcame man's hatred with your love. His weakness was extreme and the cruelty of his executioners excessive. They tried to hasten his steps when he could scarcely move. We must resolve to rise every time we fall, to love instead of hate, to hope instead of despair. We should do our best amid a multitude of failures. We must never let our sins and weaknesses keep us from starting over again. A saint is someone who keeps rising from his faults and trying to do God's will. Jesus, help me never to become so discouraged that I stop trying to know, love, and serve you.
the tent station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they began tearing off your clothes, Jesus, they exposed the whip lashes on your back and the bruises on your body. They tried to shame you, Jesus. The last of your meager earthly possessions were now gone. Then fulfilling the words of the prophet, they drew lots for your clothes. That afternoon, that Friday afternoon, you were not a pleasant sight to see. But how beautiful you are to those who try to understand the depths of your love. His inner garments adhered to his torn flesh. And they dragged them off so roughly that the skin came with them. Lord, I weigh myself down with so many things, forgetting that I am on a journey. Yet someday I will be stripped of all my possessions. I even cling to my pride and selfishness. Jesus, strip me of all that holds me back from you. Let me use all my possessions for your honor and glory. May my greatest wealth be the love and praise I give to you. The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It is hard to imagine nails being driven into a person's body. The fear and pain must be terrible as the nail stabs the human flesh. The senseless cruelty of it all. But you allowed your hands and feet to be nailed to the wood of the cross for love of me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They have numbered all my bones. Jesus, you were nailed in my place. I am the evildoer. Yet I grow angry at the least bit of pain that comes into my life, even the normal sufferings that affect everyone. Help me to be more patient. Help me to offer my sufferings as some small penance for my sins. When I am helplessly nailed to some suffering, teach me how weak I am and how much I need your love. My sufferings make me a more understanding and caring person. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, you hung on the cross three or four feet off the ground. And you lost a great amount of blood through your open wounds. What pain and sorrow showed in your face. All your loving and caring had come to this. A criminal who hung by your side asked for forgiveness. And you told them, this day you will be with me in paradise. Dark clouds rolled across the sky. And in a loud voice you cried out, it is finished. You bowed your head and died. Christ, for our sake, became obedient unto death. Even to death on the cross. Lord, everyone wants his or her life to be happy and successful. But all your efforts seem lost and your life wasted. You seem to have failed. Please teach me to judge success by your standards. Teach me to find happiness in your will. With your death there on that silent tree, your life is more successful than all the successes of people before or after you. Your tree has become a glorious victory. The gates of heaven are open, allowing me, a poor sinner, to enter into the joys of paradise. The 13th station, 
Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, loving hands took the nails out of your body and lifted you gently from the cross. Mary received into her arms the body of her son, Jesus of Nazareth. What did Mary see? A baby born long ago in Bethlehem? A child and young man who grew up and worked at Nazareth? A man who walked from town to town preaching God's love? Her son, killed in Jerusalem and now resting against her body? Only a mother or father can fully experience the scene we now witness. Jesus is taken down from the cross and placed in the arms of his afflicted mother. She receives him with unutterable tenderness and holds him to her bosom. Sorrow floods my soul when someone I love dies. The greater the love during life, the more painful the separation at death. After death, we still treat the body with love and reverence because it was the temple of the soul. Holy Spirit, Jesus, teach me during life to care for those who need consolation and understanding. The fourth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The time had come for Jewish burial. Mary and members of the family washed away the stains of blood. The body of our Lord was wrapped in clean linen cloth and placed in a new tomb donated to the family by Joseph of Arimathea. Then a large rock was rolled up to close off the entrance to the burial cave. After so much suffering, the sacred body of Jesus Christ was finally laid to rest. Jesus, by your death and burial, forgive my sins and let me praise you and love you forever. Death and burial will close my career on this earth, but I select my future judgment by the way I live each day. May my life be filled with kindness, mercy, and respect for others. I want to die a servant of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Okay. Amen. Dear Jesus, in the journey to Calvary, I have seen what the selfishness of sin can do. I have also seen God's love, and how great I can become if I am a person of love. I ask pardon for my sins. While I live, I am responsible to you for all my actions, and when I die, I want to die in your love. Look down upon me, good and gentle Jesus, while before your face I humbly kneel and with burning soul pray and beseech you to fix deep in my heart lively sentiments of faith, hope, and charity, true contrition for my sins, and a firm purpose of amendment. I contemplate with great love and tender devotion your five most precious wounds, 
pondering over them and calling to mind the words which David said of you. They have pierced my hands and my feet. They have numbered all my bones. The act of contrition. O oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins because of your just punishments. But most of all, because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, to sin no more, and to avoid the near occasions of sin, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as always, now I offer those of you at home, especially during this time of pandemic, a blessing. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves every day, take up our crosses, and follow Him. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones and all those whom you pray for today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And we end this Stations of the Cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.